he looked in the mirror and he asked himself, do I suck? He genuinely didn't know if he belonged on this level because he was so beleaguered by both the fan base and his coaches. And then Mike McDaniel put together a 700 play tape to show him how good he actually. Yesterday, Mike McDaniel said, you are the reason he got into coaching. <laughs> Can you please share just a little bit what it's like to play with him? Well, having someone that first off believes in you uh, makes all the difference. Ha having someone that uh, uh, that calls me randomly, just telling me how much I mean to, to him and, and the things that uh, he's trying to accomplish and we're trying to accomplish as a team. Um, you know, and it's cool. I've, I've never had that. Uh, I've never experienced that. This is my first time experience having that kind of relationship with someone, uh, you know, of that type of authority being the head coach of an organization. Hmm. Tua to Tungawailoa actually had to look into a mirror and wonder to himself if he sucked as a quarterback. Let that sink in. Now we know the truth. He was beat down so much by Brian Flores and a doubting Miami Dolphins fan base that he actually had to question his ability as a quarterback and whether or not he deserved to be in the NFL. It just drives me crazy to think that the Miami Dolphins head coach, Brian Flores, intentionally tried to break Tua Tungavaloa. And what's worse, it almost worked. What a scumbag. He should never, never get another head coaching job in the NFL. Brian Flores should be tossed out into the NFL dumpster and hang out with his other grifter friend, Colin Kaepernick. Tua is 14-2 and two in his last 16 starts. He has 11 touchdown passes and no interceptions since he's come back from the injury. He's 8-0 this year. And the Dolphins are 8-3 for the first time since 2001. That's 21 years since the Dolphins have been in this position. And Tua Tungabailoa is a legitimate MVP candidate. All this from a quarterback that Brian Flores wanted gone. And let's not at all forget who he wanted to bring in. Brian Flores wanted to bring in Deshaun Rubin Tug Watson. It's incredulous that he wanted to bring in Chester the Molester rather than coach up to a tongue of Iloa. And in doing so and acting that way as a head coach, Brian Flores nearly destroyed to a tongue of Iloa, not just his football career, but his life. If it weren't for the tremendous job of personal coaching by Mike McDaniel, Tua wouldn't be where he is today. Tua, the broadcast said that. Last year, you had some moments where you looked yourself in the mirror and had to ask, like, am I, am I good? Am I good? Sure. And that Mike showed you a 700-play highlight tape reminding you, yes, you are. Can you, I guess, describe from your perspective what that process was? Uh, well, I, I, I thought it was cool. You know, I, I think anyone here can attest to someone believing in them. And, um, you know, how, how that changes how they see um, themselves, but also things around them. So perspective, but it, it, it I mean, it, it was awesome. Um, there's a lot of uh, details that um, uh, entail, you know, me sitting down with him and, and uh, other things as well, but uh, it, it, it's awesome. It's really cool. Imagine being drafted as a top five pick and then wondering with this new coach coming in, if you were going to be his guy. And that new coach, smelling an air of desperation, takes the time to compile a video with 700 of your plays to show you that you are indeed that guy. Here's Mike McDaniel addressing this. 700 play highlight reel um, as part of, like, I guess your introduction to him or... Who, who are you talking to? Who's your source? <laughs> Broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Can you talk to us about that, uh, the process of putting that together and what made you want to do that for? You, you try and um, put yourself in other people's shoes as best you can. I think that's an important component to being a head coach. And, you know, no one really, I think it's hard for people to truly um, wrap their head around what it is to be a quarterback in the National Football League in terms of you talk about as much pressure as one could ever have. You have all these teammates depending on you to do the right thing on every play. Um, 
people are trying to tackle you full speed while you're making split sec second decisions and you're in charge of making sure that uh, our plus minus turnover ratio is right. That is a hard, hard job. Not to mention this just in, anybody that's drafted as a quarterback in the top 10, top five, they want to be good. They want to be good with the, the I, I would not, I would not want to trade places or wish um, any short, any sort of, uh, anybody really to, to be drafted super high um, and then fall short of the franchise's expectations. That is a tough place to live in. And that was the motivating factor um, behind everything is you, you acknowledging that, understanding that, wow, it's hard enough to play an opponent. Um, I better make sure, you know, there's a lot of things that are telling me that this, this player may not have the confidence that he should. Um, so instead of getting mad at that or doing anything, um, it was incredibly important that anybody that would listen um, would be able to s see from a starting point, not just, you know, not just watch the FaceTime where I'm like, yeah, you're going to be a great player, um, to actually know. And it was easy. He, he had the stuff on the tape. And, um, you know, I think that's a, a credit to him. And he, he's, he's, to his credit, he's really listened, taken the coaching that he's good, said, okay, coach, I believe you. And um, I think you guys have seen the residuals. What Mike McDaniel just said is something he's been saying since the very beginning. A top tier player like Tua wants to be good. And no player wants to feel like he sucks, especially a top five draft pick. Amazingly, some people have seen Tua's vulnerability as a sign of weakness. Mike McDaniel gratefully saw it as a product of his environment. He knew that Brian Flores had beaten this quarterback into submission. You see, Mike McDaniel is a firm believer in a person's tape. He believes that your tape shows who you are as a player. So what he saw in those 700 plays that he looked at told him that Tua Tungbailoa not only was going to be his quarterback, but he was going to lead the Miami Dolphins back to the playoffs. And what he also saw on that tape of 700 plays is that Brian Flores wasn't allowing Tua Tungbailoa to be the quarterback that he could be. You have to credit Mike McDaniel for having this kind of vision. And you have to remember, this intuition, this vision, is from a first-year head coach. I think the Dolphins have found a winner, quite the gem, with Mike McDaniel. Were you aware, or what point were you aware <coughs> that his confidence had dropped that low from the season? Um, I, this, was not, this was not going off of straight fact, this was just using intuition. That uh, getting beat up and having your existence be, be completely tainted by people saying that you aren't X, Y, or Z. And then on top of that, um, from my vantage point, I felt like he was put behind the eight ball in, in a way with, um, you know, the, he, he, Basically, he, his strengths, he couldn't play to. And so if, if you're not able to play to your, play to your strengths in, the, in your position that you've, one of the reasons you've gotten there is you're an unbelievable point guard. I, I felt how could he um, with all the things going on and all the, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of loud noise that you try to ignore, but people are human. so. Um, it was intuition and it started, you know, seeing him every practice once he started getting, um, you know, a little bit more confidence each and every day, you could see his personality evolve. And that's when, that's when I learned kind of how deep it was because I'm learning his personality.
a good coach knows X's and O's. What makes a great coach is a coach that knows the X's and O's and knows the players that can execute that the best for him. That was a major flaw that Brian Flores had and couldn't admit. Mike McDaniel isn't making that kind of a mistake. The first day I meet, meet him is who I know him as. And then you fast forward a month and a half and he's a different guy. Then retroactively, you're like, wow, that was real. And it's not like he admitted it either to me at the time, live speed. You know, this is something that um, I think he, he, uh, he, he did, all he did was just come to work, buy in, listen, um, and then do what he could control instead of worrying about any of it. The relationship with Mike McDaniel and Tua Tonga Bailoa has already been established as a very special relationship. I've touched that on many of my previous videos. But a major portion of why this relationship works is complete, utter commitment and buy-in to the entire scheme. It also involves a great deal of mutual respect. So Tua's success is a product of his hard work to learn and the organization's commitment to him. He chopped wood, got with Coach Bevel and, and Chandler Henley, and they, they've not done anything but tried to work on technique fundamentals and how to play the position at an elite level and they've done an outstanding job with that and, and the result is success henceforth we were eight and zero with him um or i guess that's he didn't finish the game but you guys get it <laughs> he wins a lot Oh, and I love how Mike McDaniel pokes fun of that idiom that the media is saying that two is 8-0 on games he starts and finishes. It's ridiculous. Two is 8-0. And the bottom line is that Tua Tungavailoa is a winner. Period. Mike McDaniel is an excellent coach. He understands what it needs to bring the best out of a player. Brian Flores is a scumbag who should never be a head coach in the NFL ever again. So let me know what you think. You think that Mike McDaniel is indeed handling Tua Tonga Bailoa better than Brian Flores? That's pretty much a gimme, but I'd love to know what you guys think. And if you'd like to see any of my other videos on the Miami Dolphins, go ahead and click one right here. And tomorrow is Tua Tuesday. I'd love for you to join me as we talk about everything Tua and pay some homage to his Hawaiian culture. Fins up. Talk to you soon. Is anybody catching on to this Barry guy?